I like to turn on studio. Okay. This video is sponsored by ViewSonic. What is this? What happened to the iMac? Oh, why does he always have to change things? So if I move that there, then my queen's protected. But... <laughs> I was waiting for this call. What is this? Listen, believe me, you're gonna prefer this. We're using the M1 now. It's a far quicker machine, and that's a much better monitor. It's a ViewSonic VP3881. It's huge. Yep. 38 inches, 21 by 9. I can see that the MacBook isn't even plugged in though. The M1's gonna die. Hang on, just listen. There's one USB-C cable. It delivers the signal to the monitor and charges the MacBook at the same time. Wait, what? I like that. It's pretty nice, right? Yeah. I hate wires everywhere. I know you do. It looks pretty clean. Here's one for you too. It's very color accurate. Guess how many colors? I don't know. Five million or something? A bit more than that. 4.39 trillion. I literally don't even understand how big that number is. It's gonna be great for color grading and photo editing too. The Color Pro series is literally designed for content creators. You literally sound like you're just reading an ad. I mean, it is a sponsored video. Fair point. Listen, rather than me just telling you all about it, there's a video I made, it's on the desktop, it's called View Sonic. It'll tell you some of my favorite features and it'll probably make it into the final edit too. Okay, I'll just go watch that then. Okay, bye. All right, bye. He said it's on the desktop. Oh, view Sonic. Here's a few things that I've quite liked in terms of using the monitor, but also in terms of like how it improves my workflow. Hey, if you like this video, chances are you probably will like the other videos I make too. So maybe try hitting subscribe down below. All right, thanks. Now I do have the monitor on a adjustable height desk, but you can actually adjust the height and the angle of the monitor as well. You can pitch the monitor angle up, and you can, of course, swivel it, rotate it. It actually turns quite a bit. And if you do need to adjust the height, you can just kind of push it up and down really smoothly with one finger to adjust the height. Often with bigger monitors, the resolutions aren't that good and pixels are pretty obvious. But the resolution of this monitor is actually 3840 by 1600. So it has a high resolution. And even if you're working close to it, it still looks nice and clear. Now, as it's a 21 by nine aspect ratio as well, if you wanna watch anamorphic content, like if I just pull up some of my anamorphic videos that I've done before, they fill the screen completely and it just looks gorgeous. The monitor supports HDR playback too. So you can load up iPhoneDo, Farouk's channel and play back his iMac intro, which he shot entirely in HDR. And it just looks beautiful when you're watching it. Now I'm using USB-C to connect my M1 to the display just because it powers it simultaneously and sends a signal. So I only need to use the one cable. But if you wanted to use DisplayPort, you can. There's one of those in the back. And there's also two HDMIs as well. So you can plug in a PlayStation, a Fire Stick, whatever you want to use, you can plug that in the back and then change the input on the side of the monitor. It does also have USB ports that supply power as well. That's how I'm able to use this RGB light strip. I just like the way that that looks in the office. Just goes well with the vibe. The monitor does have speakers built into it as well. Plug in a 3.5 mil cable on the back and you'll get your sound directly out of the monitor too. Now, a big thing that I found pretty useful with the width is being able to have two apps open and have them relatively large at the same time. A couple of examples. Before I shoot B-roll, I'll often edit the entirety of my A-roll first, and then I'll rewatch it and take notes on my phone as to what B-roll I need to shoot. With this, because the screen is so wide, I can have Final Cut open, pop the notes on the left of my screen, and be watching it through on Final Cut as I'm jotting down in my notes app the B-roll that I need to shoot, which is pretty handy. I can also watch a YouTube video at close to what full screen would be on my 27 inch iMac and have another window open right next to it. So I can watch content and aimlessly browse B&H to just look for things I don't need to buy. And of course, as you probably imagine, editing video on a big wide screen in Final Cut is an absolute joy. Having a widescreen monitor just allows you to get so much more of the timeline in. On the iMac, I'd find myself hiding and unhiding the inspector and the effects tabs. But with this, I can literally just leave everything open have it all there and ready to use when I need to. In general, it just adds up to be a bit of a quicker edit and my previews are bigger too, which is always a good thing. The design of the monitor itself is super sleek. I like how the base has the same curve to it as the actual panel does. The bezels are thin. The screen itself has a good matte finish to it. And I like that it's just all black. It matches very well with my desk space in general. In terms of the rest of the desk setup, I'm using a Moton MacBook stand. All my cables and power bar are neatly housed underneath the desk in these Vivo under desk cable tidies, which are actually screwed into the bottom of my FlexiSpot E1 height adjustable desk. I'm using a Samsung, not Samsung, mic stand with a blue Yeti and a Mookie pop filter. 
This is for quick voiceovers and podcasts. For a mouse, I just swapped to the Logitech MX Master 3, and I'm still using the Apple Magic Keyboard. It kind of annoys me because it stands out a bit being so white, and I don't love that. I'm probably gonna swap to a Logitech keyboard as well soon. Now, I'm no audiophile, I just go by what reviews say, and when I was looking up, I ended up buying these edifiers, edifiers, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, S2000 Mark III's. I have those sat on top of Atlantic speaker stands. These monitors sound incredible and they've just given me the ability to hear things that I really never heard before, like how bad my audio normally is. I also like that they have Bluetooth built in if I wanna just connect my phone and play some songs quickly or something. And finally, for extra cable tidy management, I even found these little black cable tidy clips, which keep things neatly where I want them, but can also be unclipped and you can move things around if you need to. Thanks again to ViewSonic for sending the monitor through and for sponsoring today's video. As I said, if you're interested in anything I've talked about today, including the monitor, I'll pop all the links down below for you. Thank you for watching. That's that. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.